Lord, for what ears have heard and uh, hearts have felt. Now, Father, we pray that you move in this house. We pray, Lord, for preaching power. We pray, Lord, that you bring down a healing.
going to give you a text in just a second. Coming from this 14th chapter of Matthew, before I give you the text, amen, I need to prepare your mind so that you'll know where I'm going. Uh, this, 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 when we look at this 14th chapter, Amen. It starts out by when John the Baptist was killed. The dazzle, she danced for Herod. Made a deal. I do whatever you ask if you grant me my wish. After she danced, her wish was to have the head of John the Baptist. And, and and it goes on, and the disciples ran and told Jesus about it. The Bible teaches us that he was saddened and went into a ship. And it said that the multitude followed him by foot. And the Bible goes on and said, and he healed the sick that was within the multitude. And not only that, then the disciples tell him that we were in a strange land and, and said we need to send the multitude away and we must leave. Um, but the Bible teaches us that God, that Jesus said, no, let's give them something to eat. And Jesus at that time fed the multitude with two fish, five loaves. He multiplied the food and fed them. And then the Bible said he constrained his disciples. In other words, he told them to go ahead, get on the ship and go to the other side. Now I'm fixing to get ready to get to my text. It said, the Bible said the ship ran into a storm. But when you read this text, you'll find it very serious that when the Bible talks about the storm, it doesn't mention anything about rain. You'll find when you read this chapter and it talks about a storm, it doesn't mention anything about thunder. It doesn't mention anything about lightning. But what it mentioned is wind. Matter of fact, when you read the text, it mentioned wind three times. And when it mentions wind, it, it mentions it with adjectives. It describes the wind. First, to say the wind was contrary. Amen. And I took the liberty of looking it up. And when it looked it up according to the text, it means that it was opposing. It was against. Uh, but when you look it up in Webster, Webster said, decline to disagree. Then when you look at it again, the Bible speaks of when, amen, in the 30th verse, and it said it was boisterous. And when you look that up according to the text, it meant it was powerful had strength, but Webster say noisy. And then again, it mentions when, again in the 32nd verse, it said it ceased. According to the text, it means that it ended it raging. It ended labor and toil. Webster say it just simply come to an end. Then when the Bible talks about the storm, it mentions waves one time. And it simply mentioned waves because the wind caused it. So we want to talk for just a moment, brothers and sisters, about stop watching the wind and start watching Jesus. Even the waves begin to roll because of the wind. Now I want to make this thing simple before I go any further. Make it plain to you and tell you to stop watching what the enemy is doing. Stop watching what the enemy is telling you what you can't do. And start watching Christ. Start listening to what he's telling you. As Christians, many of us are afraid to step out of our comfort zones. We are afraid to leave our area of safety. Uh, we are afraid to enter into new territory. And the reason that we are afraid is because we are always listening to what the enemy is saying. The enemy say, you don't need an education. You know what I say to that? You'll win. 
That's what I hear. The enemy will tell you that you don't need that promotion on your job. Win. The win of the enemy. Amen. They'll tell you uh, that, that you can't, uh, can't do it. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the know-how. But that is the wind of the enemies. And we got to stop watching and listening to what the winds say. And put our eyes on Christ. We see in the text when, when Peter took his eyes off Christ. The Bible said that he heard, he saw the wind was boisterous. When he took his eyes, his attention off Christ, he began to sink. We got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, there are many things in life that we can focus on. And, and depending on what we're looking at, and depending on what we're listening to, will determine our success or our failures. Can I say it in another way? Depending on who we're looking at, depending on who we're listening to, will, de will determine our success or our failure. Whether we continue on this journey of faith or sink into a sea of failure will depend on who we're listening to. I don't know about you, but I'd rather listen to this. I'd rather listen to what is said in this book. I'm not worried about what nobody else is saying. What I'm interested in saying is what God is talking about. I've learned in my life that God won't lead me in the wrong way. I've learned in my life about just listen to him. And everything will be all right. Uh, the, the song said a few minutes ago, he got me by the hand. And I can't even walk without him holding my hand. So I am convinced if I keep my eyes on him and stop listening to the winds of the enemy, and everything would be all right. When we look at the text that has been referenced this morning, I'm sure that this ship was a place of safety. And I'm sure that this ship was designed, amen, to withstand this journey through rough winds and high waves. And we know this because some of the disciples were scared to step out of the ship. They stayed in their place of comfort, in their place of safety. Amen. We know this because Peter was the only one that stepped out. Amen. But, but while they were in their comfort zone, the Bible teaches us, amen, that a storm began to roll. Uh, the Bible teaches us that a storm surrounded these men. And it said that the waves began to cause the ship to rock and reel. Tossing the ship from side to side. Many of the disciples had began to bear war out of their comfort zone. Amen. I can see the sails of the ship as it was whipping in the wind. I can even hear the groaning of the mast as they struggled to support the sails yeah. under the load yeah. of the wind. Right. I can even imagine in my mind that the rudders of the ship mm -hmm. had difficulties guiding the ship oh, yeah. along its designated yeah, yeah, path. Yeah, yeah. But in the midst of their storm, oh, yeah. the Bible said Jesus showed up yeah. walking on the stormy waters. Yeah. And look at what happened. When Jesus showed up walking on the water, the disciples lost their focus momentarily on the storm. They said it seemed, they looked out and it looked like a spirit. They lost focus on their troubles when they saw Jesus. And they looked out and they saw the man who was able to calm the storm. And they walked, they looked out and saw the man who stepped out into nothing and made everything. Matter of fact, they had just seen Jesus heal the sick. And not only that, they just seen him feed the multitude. 
Now they see him walking on water. Can I get a witness? They had just seen him multiply the bread and the fish. The Bible said he fed 5,000, not including the men and the children and the women. Now here he comes, stepping out on the water, walking in the midst of the trouble. Uh, the Bible said Peter looked out, and he realized that it was Jesus, the Son of Man, walking on the water. Peter cried out to the Lord, Lord, if it be thou. He said unto him, bid me to come unto you on the water. Amen. But in the eyes of the enemy, I want you to know that this, amen, request would have been a request of danger. Many would have been afraid that Peter was stepping out into danger. But Peter realized that this was God. He realized that this was Jesus Christ that was on the water. He realized that this was the man who can put his feet on stable ground on a rock to stay. Uh, the Bible said that the ship was being tossed and driven. Uh, the waves were raging high. But Jesus told Peter, he said, come unto me. I want you to know this morning that Christ is saying the same thing to you. The waves may be getting high. The winds may be blowing. But Christ is still standing and said, come up unto me. Don't worry about the wind. Step out of your comfort zone. Don't worry about what the enemy is telling you. Step out of your comfort zone and come unto me. The waves may be raging. Peter stepped out and began to move toward the Lord. And he was not stepping out to be a show. He was not stepping out saying, see what I can do. But he stepped out on faith. He stepped out because he loved Jesus Christ. I wonder how many here today can step out on faith. I wonder how many here today can step out simply because we love the Lord. Amen. I wonder how many can do that. He was stepping out on love. Peter stepped out of his comfort zone. He ventured out of the boat. Can I get a witness? But the Bible said when Peter saw that the wind, Webster say, became noisy, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. And the Bible said he began to sink. And then he cried out unto the Lord, save me. And this God that I know reached forth his hands and picked up Peter. Amen. Then the Bible said, then the wind ceased. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, when you cry out to the Lord, and whenever he picks you up, the wind will cease. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Whenever, amen, friends turn their back on you, yeah. I want you to realize that simply the enemy wins. Yeah. And I want you to stop listening to the winds yeah. and start listening to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Whenever the enemy tell you that you can't move ahead, yeah. I want you to know that it's simply the winds of the enemy. Yeah. Whenever the bills are due, Amen. And you can't see your way through. I want you to know that that's simply the winds of the enemy. Can I get a witness? When the doctor turn their head and walk away, that is simply the winds, amen, of the enemy. But I want you to focus on this man named Jesus Christ. The one who hung from the six to the ninth hour on a hill called Calvary. Can I get a witness? This man I'm talking about, his name is Jesus. Somebody said he's Mary's baby, the lily of the valley, that bright and morning star. Can I get a witness? 
The Bible said he's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but I know him this morning as a doctor, amen, in the sick room. And a lawyer, amen, in the courtroom. Can I get a witness? Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Won't he do it? Won't he lift up a bowed down head? Won't he wipe tears from your eye? Won't he make your enemy your footstool? Ain't God all right? This man I'm talking about, Isaiah said, amen, that he was wounded for our transgression, bruised, amen, for our iniquity. Ain't God all right? By his strength, the Bible said we'll heal. Stop listening to what the enemy said and start listening to what Jesus said. Jesus said, you got the power and the authority to call on my name. He said, if you're sick, call on my name. Ain't God all right? If your head hung down, you ought to call on his name. This man I'm talking about was wounded until his body became broken. Ain't God all right? Put my cross, put your cross on his shoulder. Ain't God all right? Marched up a hill called Calvary. Ain't God all right? Took my Jesus, laid him down on an old rugged cross. Took nails, nailed them in his hands. Ain't God all right? Can I get a witness? Nailed his feet. Ain't God all right? Lift him up on an old rugged cross. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Speared him in his side. The Bible said he hung his head and bled and died. Ain't God all right? He died until the earth rocked and real. Ain't God all right? He died until the sun refused the sign. Ain't God all right? He died until the star dripped in blood. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He died. They took him down bar to ain't going all right the Bible said he laid there part of three long days can I get away the Bible said it was early 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 one Sunday morning the man got up ain't going all right he got up he got up with all power all power My way maker, Jesus, my lily of the valley, Jesus, my God, my God, my everything. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? This Jesus can lift up a bow down head. This Jesus can heal your sick body. Ain't God all right? I used to walk. I don't think like I used to think. I don't go where I used to. 
Let me tell you.
did forget to uh, thank Brother Andrew Humphrey and Brother Willie King for the work they did in the kitchen. Uh, wonderful work. Work hard for, in the name of the Lord. I have to you work with. Thank you so much for that. For giving your time to the Lord. I want to thank our visitors, amen, from Dr. Lake's office, amen. I didn't recognize them out of the scrubs. We're so grateful to have you come today and let you know that the doors of Zion Grove is always open to you. Amen. And if you can't make it, let us know and I'll bring you a CD. We'll get, you, we'll get the word to you. Amen. We're so grateful to have the opportunity to worship and praise with you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if there's no announcement, we're going to uh, prepare to be dismissed.